Mustard's Austin 1300, known as the Mustard Missile. I have driven this car before, in fact I did a review on this very car when he first got it, but he's done quite a few improvements to it. It, it is, I'm going to say, significantly better than what it was a good few months back. When I drove it before, it did have a few clonks and things, and a few things felt just a little bit on the loose side, which isn't what you want. So, what has been done to it? How much has it helped? One of the problems with these old cars when they become tax exempt and MOT exempt is that depending on the owner, they can end up being a bit uh, neglected. So what Senior Mustard has done is he's uh, changed the steering rack because that was making some horrible clocks. And then, I think it was, a, I don't think it was, there might have been a couple of ball joints as well actually. And there's definitely the engine mounts part of the exhaust fitting wasn't quite right. Not that it's important, but the steering wheel has been changed from a smaller one. Although it's not power assisted, the steering, it still doesn't really seem to uh, be heavy. Gear linkage as well. Gearbox is the same, nothing wrong with the gearbox, but the linkage has been sorted out. And that's a good thing because it was not great for changing gear beforehand. Quite a few minor cosmetic things and also the uh, hydroelastic suspension has had some work on it as well. This was quite an impressive little car this. Never been welded, there's no rust on it. It had quite a few blemishes here and there. And he's repainted these wings. And a bit on the bonnet there as well. And I believe, something else in here. Can't think of what it was. These always rotted out from the wings there because there's no uh, arch liner. So the, the dirt would get flung up and get stuck around the headlamp and then eventually it would rot out and then the headlamp would fall out and that wouldn't be particularly good. But this one's all sorted. It's obviously quite a nice colour to match in because it doesn't look like it's been done with a rattle can in the garage, but that's what it has. The other thing is he's taken off the door cards and fit in some um, sound deadening material as well. So we got a... Uh, so now they sound like this. They used to have a proper clank. There's not really needed anything going on under here. It's had a new battery, just basically been serviced. That's it really. The addition of some more sound deadening material is quite a good thing because that really did clank. Oh, the air. There's been a bit of paintwork going on at the back as well because I'm sure this this was going a bit... Um, what was wrong with it? I can't remember. There was something wrong with the back there and it's all been taken care of now. The roof does need doing if you're a perfectionist because it's a bit um, rough in places as you can see there. I think if it was my car I'd probably leave it alone. The funny thing is, it almost wasn't Mustard's car again because he sold it. He didn't have it for sale. It just happened to be one of those instances where somebody had spotted it and offered more money for it than it was worth. So the car wasn't for sale and it wasn't going to be for sale. But at the right price, of course everything is. And so Senior Mustard himself loaded this car onto the back of a trailer that he borrowed and towed it all the way to Kent. I think it was Kent. If it wasn't Kent, it was somewhere that begins with a K. 300 miles with this on the back of a trailer. Got it there, took it off the trailer, and the chap said, oh, the reverse lights aren't working, and decided he didn't want it. And uh, that was that. What a strange man. 
What a strange man indeed. If I was senior mustard at that point, I think I might have just been doing a bit of f***ing jeffing. The jeffing part, at least. But that's a whole day. A whole day taken out driving a Land Rover to the south and back with a trailer on the back, only to be turned down because of a reverse light. What a strange man. I mean, I know I said that, but I mean, really, that is a very, very strange thing to do. Anyway, the question is, now that it's had these improvements, is the car any better? Well, let's do some finding out. A, a 90s car for its ease to drive. The steering feels really sharp now. The brakes are good. It handles. It, it feels like it actually wants to go on a, a good twisty fast road. And the gearbox of course is actually very very pleasant to use. You've got to uh, treat it with respect. You don't just throw it through the gears but you can actually change smoothly without any nasty crunchy horrible noises. My only criticism really with this car is actually the seat because there's just you know this this was a car made before men had legs I think because you can't adjust it you can't move it back and um, it's I'm sat a bit too far forward I think that's a reasonably sized criticism the ride is really lovely and it's really smooth they are a smooth driving car. This lovely bobbing up and down sensation that it has as the as the uh, suspension adjusts from front to back. It's it's quite a it, it's quite a comforting feeling. The clutch is ever so slightly juddery, but there's nothing really that can be done with that. It's a matter of just being used to it, I think. I really enjoy driving this car. It's a good, a really good an everyday classic. Although, of course, it might be best putting it away for the winter because you wouldn't really want to be driving this around with all that nasty, horrible weather that we're going to have before too long. The other thing is, people look at this car, people like it. You see lots of people smiling at it. Obviously because these were exceedingly popular in the 70s. They were the best selling car in the late 60s, so many people will remember them. And if they don't remember them, they're just going to look at it and think, What's that? That's interesting. All oh, that's magic. You know, some people are magic. They think, Oh, that's a horrible, sad, stupid little car. I don't know why would anyone want to drive that? Well, that's up to them to think that. The other thing that actually surprises me is how pokey this thing feels. It feels not fast, obviously, but just quite nippy. Get into fourth gear, it just tugs away really nicely. That classic Mini in front, obviously related to this in many ways. I've just noticed it's crabbing a little bit. I'm sure he's aware of that. We're just about to hit the 40 limit here, and I'm doing exactly 30. So just watch how well it picks up and that's 40 in top gear very very nice it does encourage you to drive in a rather spirited manner not in a stupid way but just in an enthusiastic way it's an enthusiastic car it's a happy car it makes me feel happy and um, yeah I'm really glad you didn't sell it in the end anyway I hope you like this video and don't forget please don't forget to do this and this as well before you leave thank you